The NX graph is probably one of the coolest parts of NX. So whenever NX starts a new workspace, it analyzes its structure and it builds up such a project graph behind the scenes. And it uses that information to understand how your workspace looks like. For instance, how many packages are in your workspace? Which relationships are between those packages? So which package depends on which other package because there are imports between them. And so this information is extremely valuable because you can do a whole lot of optimizations based on such a graph. For instance, on CI, NX can look at your PR and at the commits and understand which projects got touched by those commits. Leveraging the project graph, it can then figure out which other projects, as a consequence, need also to be linted, built, or tested. But also if it comes to distributing tasks in a most efficient way. NX can leverage that project graph again to understand how a project depends on other projects and therefore make sure those projects are being built before. As you can imagine, this can result in a much more optimized way of parallelizing and scheduling tasks. But also when it comes to things like module boundaries and enforcing such module boundaries, NX comes with cool features that are only possible due to that NX graph to restrict imports to certain areas. But the feature that people most like about it probably is the visualization of the graph. So not only does NX use the graph information behind the scenes, but you can actually have a command NX graph, which will open the graph visualization in a browser window where you can then dynamically explore your workspace. But today I have one more surprise for you. So let's check it out. So this is the NX example workspace where we have a couple of applications and libraries in here. But let's not explore them here and rather directly launch the NX graph, which we mentioned before, to visually explore how the structure looks like. So let's open the graph up here. If I click that show all projects, we will see the workspace structure with all the project and nodes that are in that workspace. And this gives me nice features such as either focusing just on one project to understand how that single project looks like, or also things like finding all the paths from this node to let's say a node down here, which will give me the shortest path, but it can also like switch to all possible paths and much more. There's another feature, however, you shouldn't miss out if you use an NX workspace in combination with Visual Studio Code which is our NX console extension that is dedicated for Visual Studio Code and should help you navigate within an NX workspace. So it comes with the recommended extensions, but you can obviously also just go to the marketplace, type NX console and install it from there. What you will get then is a dedicated icon as this one here, which if you click on it, opens up a couple of different windows. So first of all, you see all the different projects. You can basically click to get the project configuration. And it has also some nice built-in features such as being able to directly run a task by clicking here on the item above it. But one of the features that a lot of people really appreciate is the fact to be able to visually explore NX generators. So as you might know, you can run generators in an NX workspace directly from the comment line by typing something like novel react library for generating a library and so on. But for newcomers to an NX workspace, this might be difficult, especially for exploring those commands, but also in order to know which options you have. So NX comes with that generate menu item here, which allows you to visually explore those commands. So you can, for instance, say, give me all library generators, and you can see all the available ones in this current workspace. For instance, let's go to the now react one, and you can go ahead and say my lib, and basically have all the options here nicely presented, and you can fill them out and see also a dry run down here. You can always then copy the actual command such that then afterwards you can paste it in and customize it to be able to reuse it much more quickly in the future. All these commands are then also nicely integrated as a context menu, which is super handy because if you go to a specific library down here, for instance, you can just right click and say, generate me something into that specific library and it will already be contextualized. In the latest version of NX console, we integrated a nice feature. So we have seen the project graph before and it is very nice because you run the command, it opens up in a browser window, but at the same time, you have to leave your IDE, your code editor, you have to go to the browser window. It is kind of a context switching to go back and forth. So we always figured, how can we actually make this much nicer by integrating it into your experience within Visual Studio Code? And obviously, NX Console is a great place for that. 
So in the latest version, if you go to the Annex Console window here of the projects, you should see two new icons. The first one is to focus a project in the Annex Graph, and the other one is to select it in Annex Graph. So we can actually go ahead and click, for instance, this button, and you will see here the card node of that project appear. And so we can go ahead and add a couple of different nodes, and you can see how the project graph builds up as we go ahead, and we can see the structure of the project graph. Everything is integrated within Visual Studio Code. So there's a dedicated tab here that opens up and visualizes the graph. You can move it around just the same way as you're accustomed with the project graph visualized in the actual browser window. You can also go ahead and say, I'm just interested, for instance, in that card application and focus that single one and explore how those relationships look like. Similarly, if we go to the actual window here, to the Explorer window, we can go also and launch this from a contextual menu. And this is handy because you might be in that project detail page library, for instance, and you want to understand how this is connected to other libraries. So you can just right click, say focus in Annex Graph, and it will open up and show you how the other libraries relate to this specific one. So this is really just the beginning. We have already some cool ideas to continue integrating this and to make it a much better experience even. For instance, even right now, you can click not just on the notes here, but you can also click on these edges and understand why a certain relationship exists. So here, for instance, there's an import on that product's app module file, on that app module TypeScript file, which imports directly to that product detail page. So in the future, there will be things such as directly being able to click on it and jump on the actual import. But there's one more thing. Some of you might have heard that we took over SureTube of Learner, another popular monorepo tool in the JavaScript ecosystem in May this year. And we've made a bunch of optimizations, but look at this one. Now, while this was an Annex workspace with the usual Annex plugin-based setup, let me switch over to a new workspace which uses Learner and Annex. So this is the Redwood repository, an open source full stack framework for developing nicely integrated applications. And they have been using Learner and have recently upgraded to the latest Learner version 5. They have also integrated with NX and NX Cloud to optimize their workspace. Now, a nice benefit of that is that NX console will work also on those projects. So if we go here, we see the same list of projects in here and we have the same functionality. So we can go ahead and actually visualize all the different projects within that workspace, see how they are related in the very many same approach as we have seen before in a native NX workspace. So we also can go here and see, for instance, something like the router and right click and say focus in graph to understand how that router package relates to other packages in the workspace. So think about how useful such a feature can be, whether it is a new workspace which you try to explore and understand in a better way so get to get an overview, but also in an existing workspace which sometimes can be quite large to understand how packages relate to each other and why certain relationships actually exist. So if you like this content, like the video below, also make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to not miss any future updates. See you in the next one.